So recently, we received a question about whether or not you need to test for normality of groups if you have a large sample size of, say, 300 when running an ANOVA test. The same would hold for a t-test. The importance of the normality of each group is key to running a valid statistical test. While ANOVA is robust against violation of assumptions, it's always good to understand the distribution of each group to make sure that you're using the appropriate test. And so therefore, if you run into a problem with normality, you'll no longer use ANOVA, you'll use something else, a non-parametric test, most notably the Crisco wallace test. So let's take a look at an example here. What we've done in the first three lines here is we've created a data set in which we have three groups, um, values for A, B, and C, which will be represented by group one, two, and three. The first two will be normally distributed with a mean of zero, and the first one will have a standard deviation of 1.5. The second one will have a standard deviation of two. The third one will actually come from an exponential distribution. But again, if you have the data, you may not know that unless you look at the histogram. So what we do is we're going to take a, a look at the box plot first. And when we run a box plot, we'll see that the groups actually do look a little bit different. But in general, their medians are the same or close to it. However, obviously the distribution is a little different. So if we run the ANOVA analysis, we'll end up seeing that according to this, that there is no difference between the groups. So one might assume that when we have completely run it, that since the null hypothesis is that all the groups are the same, we would not have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Even though our box plot clearly looks as though the third group is different than the first two. So as you can see from the means, we might conclude that group two and group three are the same and group one is different, but ANOVA didn't tell us that. So we can't just rely on looking at the means and making that assumption. That's not what these tests are about. If we look at the histograms of each one of these, you can clearly see the difference in C. And remember, ANOVA is about the analysis of variance, and it does assume that there are equal variances. What's clearly important is that we have to measure what those variances are, or is there a difference between them? Now, the Levine test is actually used to test for constant variance across the groups. So it's going to use that formula from ANOVA to make that determination. The null hypothesis is that there is a constant variance among the groups. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one group is different. And so therefore, again, we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and we can say that the variance is clearly different between the groups. So this will provide more evidence that we probably need to use the non-parametric test. And so therefore, we have evidence to suggest, since we do know that the groups are clearly not normal, at least one of them, we then should basically run the Kruskal-Wallis test. And the Kruskal-Wallis test, the null hypothesis is that the groups are equivalent. It's the same as the ANOVA. The only difference is this is using the rank order as opposed to using the means. The results of this test show that the p-value is less than 0.05, so we will reject the null hypothesis and state that we have evidence that at least one group is different. And so therefore, even with larger sample sizes of, say, 300, you still should test for the normality of each group to make that determination as to whether you should be using a parametric or non-parametric test.